from the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Peter Tischer. And I'm Roger Charlton. Hi, Roger. Hi, Peter. Um, I wanted to talk today about uh, something that students ask me constantly, and that is, if I want to improve my English and I want to listen to authentic material, am I doing the right thing by watching one of the news channels, News 24, CNN, and so on? Well, there's more to television, of course, than news, is yeah. what my first answer would, exactly. would, would be, I, I guess. It's, like, it's a little one-sided if you only watch news reporting. And it's also quite predictable. I mean, the stories are in the air, so to speak. Which may be an advantage, though. Absolutely. You may know the news, you may know the content, and now you can listen to the way that something you already know about is presented yeah. in the foreign language. Right. But, of course, it's a very specific type of language. It is. It's a news language. So I think one important aspect to consider here is what kind of language do you want to learn about? One example, learn. news reporting contains far more passive voice verbs than other kinds of spoken language. Which, of course, may inspire you, let's put it that way, to use a little bit too much of the passive voice. It could be, yes. Yeah, right. So what about alternatives? Feature films are available on DVD. Um, TV series? Actually, I, uh, when students ask me this question, I usually tend towards TV series. Yeah. There is uh, there's one reason. They have a very clear-cut structure. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for students to follow. At one point, they know the characters. Yeah. They know basically the structure of an episode. And knowing this, they can concentrate more on the language. So you're thinking things like Friends, Seinfeld, Sex in the City. Right. I mean, you know, I don't know, uh, Joey is always the character in Friends who gets the girls <laughs> and who has a sort of, um, well, easygoing way of life. And then you have other characters on the show who are kind of unsure about themselves. Mm. So you know what's coming. And I think that's more important for learners. Whereas in a movie, you have a whole new setting at the beginning of the movie. And Although movies might have one big advantage Which because is? the DVD versions, well, there are several language versions on a single DVD normally uh -huh. with or without subtitles. So I think the subtitles might help a certain kind of learner. I think so too. Subtitles, to me, they definitely help for, uh, well, actually, the question is, which kind of subtitle do you want to use? There is the possibility of using the English subtitle, so the subtitle for the hearing impaired, basically. But yeah. as a learner, you can say, well, I want to read what I can listen to, yeah. just to be sure. Or if you're a weaker learner, you can turn on the German subtitle. Yeah. And but at least get an idea of what's going on, pick up a few phrases here and there. But one thing I wanted to say is the subtitle argument is not only true for movies. You can buy television series on DVD with the subtitles now. Oh, right. Just be sure you don't buy them in Great Britain because very often you won't get the subtitles with that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I just bought a, a box of House MD, which yes. is called Dr. House in Germany. Yeah. And uh, they have a lot of medical jargon on there. And I don't understand a thing. <laughs> and I would love to have subtitles here. Right. <laughs> um, but speaking of that, I even know of a teacher at our university who used House MD in order to teach a medical English course. Well, why not? If, Because if, you if get the, it everything. You if get the everything. terminology is correct, why It's not? It's correct. Use it? One thing we have to say, though, this is drama. Yeah. So people should be aware of the fact that this is not authentic English as it is spoken on the street or no, in the family. There are huge differences between what you hear in a film and a TV series and what you hear in the street. Uh, which, by the way, one proof of that is take Big Brother. Yeah. This is unscripted. This is not drama. It's authentic more than other stuff. 
but this is why it is so boring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in order to make a film interesting, you have to script it yeah. in that way. You do not have all the elements of normal spoken language. I right. think people have to be aware of that. You can read it everywhere that supposedly films or movies have authentic spoken language, and that is simply not true no. in this way. No. It's correct language, but it's not authentic. But most authentic language is impossible for outsiders to understand because you would need to know who the people are, the situation they are in. And if you don't believe it, then just look at something like the British National Corpus, the spoken material there, and it is extremely difficult to pick up. Right. Which is another case for using TV shows yes. because they are made to understand. I think time has run out, but, you know, I want to get back to this topic again. We should. Especially, maybe we should talk about a few TV shows or maybe even movies that we consider good for use for an English learner. And there is a whole other medium that I want to mention as well. Okay, but uh, let's talk about this some other time. Okay. Okay, see you around, Roger. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, dear listeners. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.